Honduras is located in Central America and is bordered by Guatemala, El Salvador, and Nicaragua. The Caribbean Sea lies to the north and the Pacific Ocean is to the southwest. Unfortunately, Honduras is no stranger to natural disasters. In 1998, Hurricane Mitch slammed into Honduras with sustained wind speeds of 285 kilometers per hour, enough to wipe out 75% of the transportation infrastructure of the entire country, including nearly all the bridges and secondary roads. This storm resulted in some 7,000 deaths, 80,000 destroyed or damaged homes, and $4 billion in damage. The earthquake that occurred on May 28, 2009, was nowhere near as destructive as Hurricane Mitch. This earthquake, a magnitude 7.3 event, occurred offshore in the Caribbean Sea, about 120 kilometers from the northern coast of Honduras and about 45 kilometers northeast of the island of Roatan, which has a population of several thousand people. The earthquake occurred on a transform fault zone within the Cayman Trench. It is located right at the boundary between the North American plate and the Caribbean plate. Central America and the Caribbean region are well known for having a high level of seismic activity. For example, in 1972, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake struck the city of Managua in Nicaragua. The result was some 5,000 people were killed by collapsing buildings. Another devastating earthquake in Central America was the Mexico City earthquake of 1985. This earthquake was actually centered on the west coast of Mexico near the Pacific Ocean, but it caused very strong ground shaking in Mexico City, which is underlain by soft sediments. This earthquake resulted in some 9,000 deaths and about $4 billion in damage. The Caribbean region, located to the east of Central America, is also frequented by many earthquakes. For example, a magnitude 7.4 earthquake struck the island of Martinique in 2007. This earthquake resulted in one death and moderate damage on Martinique, as well as affecting some of the neighboring islands. Honduras has a population of about 8 million people. The May 28, 2009 earthquake caused severe shaking in northern Honduras and resulted in widespread panic among the local residents. Our field survey found that poor building construction caused most of the destruction and loss of lives in Honduras. Many of the homes are made of unreinforced cinder blocks or masonry. Roofs were mostly made of corrugated metal, simply lying on steel beams, and in the poorest neighborhoods, the construction consisted simply of corrugated metal nailed to wooden frames. The earthquake occurred at 2.24 a.m while most of the people were at home sleeping. The six fatalities that occurred in this earthquake were caused by collapsing buildings. What 
¿Cómo fue? Temblaba exagerado. Se meneaba, pues, y era algo que, que ni uno mismo no podía creer si es que era, estaba pasando, sinceramente. Entonces, nosotros salimos corriendo. ¿A la calle? A la calle, a buscar auxilio, pues, porque no, nadie podía quedarse ahí, a no ser que no lo supiera. Let's have a look at the Democracy Bridge in the city of El Progreso, located some 200 kilometers from the epicenter. This bridge spans the country's largest river, and part of the bridge collapsed during the earthquake. As you can see, the central part of the older bridge fell right into the river due to the strong ground shaking. Taller buildings often experience more damage during strong ground motion. The San Pedro Courthouse is a multi-story building made of concrete. As you can see, this building suffered moderate damage during the earthquake, with many fractures in the columns and walls. Se llama, se llama Instituto José Santos Guardiola. Bueno, eh, lo que le estaba diciendo que el tercer piso del edificio fue el que sufrió los mayores daños, lo que es el, el laboratorio de computación y el laboratorio de electrónica. Pero también sufrió daños el segundo piso, pero este, este tercer piso fue el que sufrió más daño, porque puede ver esa pisura ahí que es bien, bien profunda y, y bien ancha. Nosotros tenemos, aparte de este edificio, tenemos dos más, pero los otros edificios, la planta de abajo es de material de concreto y este no sufrió ningún daño. Y la segunda parte, como es de madera, entonces la flexibilidad de la madera hizo que, que no pasara nada. Pues. El, el sistema eléctrico, las paredes, todo está en buen estado. Uh -huh. Solo este edificio fue el que sufrió estos daños graves aquí. Uh -huh. sí. While damage was significant in some cities on the Honduran mainland, like El Progreso, we expected even greater damage on the Honduran island of Roatan, since this island is located just 45 kilometers from the epicenter. Our field investigation, however, uncovered a really big surprise. Although the island of Roatan is so near the epicenter, the high-quality construction used in the buildings there, as well as the solid rock that Roatan lies upon, prevented a major disaster from occurring. This earthquake demonstrates the need for earthquake preparedness. Here are some of the ways residents can be prepared, as well as ways we can fix the vulnerabilities in our homes. In order to keep your family safe, it's important that you create a family disaster plan. This includes deciding where you will all meet after an earthquake, preparing disaster kits, and learning about how to protect yourself during strong earthquake shaking. Think too about the buildings you live and work in. It's important to reinforce concrete and masonry walls. The frame of the building must be securely bolted to the solid foundation. Proper bracing of the walls will also help the structure to survive strong ground shaking. The May 28, 2009 Honduras earthquake is a reminder that the next earthquake can strike at any time. We all need to be prepared. <laughs>